My name is Bruce, and welcome to lesson number four on preparing precipitates. In this lesson, we will learn what a precipitate is, we will use the solubility rules to make the precipitates, and we will explain the chemical reactions by writing balanced chemical equations. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to prepare insoluble salts by precipitation and write balanced chemical equations for the reactions taking place. There are some spectacularly colorful experiments that you can see in a chemistry laboratory. This is one of the most beautiful you will see. Take a good look at the glittering crystals that are floating down in this flask. This is not glitter, but an example of preparing precipitates. In chemistry, a precipitate is a solid that is formed in solution as a result of a chemical reaction. The abbreviation for the term precipitate is PPT. This is an important term, so please learn it. A precipitate, abbreviated PPT, is a solid formed in a solution. Let's now recap some important terminology from our previous lessons. A substance is soluble if it is able to dissolve in a solvent and insoluble if it is unable to dissolve. When sodium chloride is added to water, the solute dissolves in the solvent to form a solution. Sodium chloride is soluble in water. When calcium carbonate is added to water, it does not dissolve. Therefore, calcium carbonate is insoluble. Do you recall the solubility rules from our previous lesson? Let's refresh our memories. Rule number one, all nitrates are soluble. Rule number two, all carbonates are insoluble except carbonates of group one metals and ammonium. The third rule, all group one metals and ammonium salts are soluble. Rule four, all chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble, except those of silver, mercury, and lead. And rule number five, all sulfates are soluble, except those of calcium, barium, and lead. In this lesson, we will investigate how to precipitate insoluble salts from two solutions of soluble salts. I'm going to start this by showing you how to prepare that beautiful precipitate we saw at the beginning of the lesson. We begin by making a solution of lead nitrate. Take a careful look at the solution of lead nitrate. Notice that the solute has dissolved completely, just as rule number one predicted. Remember, all nitrates are soluble. Now, we will make a solution of potassium iodide. Take a careful look at the solution. Potassium iodide is a soluble salt. Therefore, it will dissolve completely. Remember, all group one metals and ammonium salts are soluble. Before we continue with this experiment, I would like to write down the ionic equations to show you the dissociation of these salts in water. Here is our first dissociation equation. Lead nitrate will dissociate to form lead 2 plus ions and nitrate ions. Now the potassium iodide, with the formula Ki, will also dissociate to form potassium ions in aqueous solution and iodide ions also in aqueous solution. The next step in this experiment is to pour the two solutions into the large beaker. Watch and observe what happens. Did you see that a cloudy yellow mixture formed? After a short time, the yellow particles settle onto the bottom of the beaker. Can you work out what the precipitate is? What precipitate will form when lead nitrate is added to potassium iodide? If you are not quite sure what the precipitate is, then think about what ions were present in the original solutions and the solubility rules. Here are our original dissociation equations. 
Notice that when we mix the two solutions together, we have lead and potassium cations present and iodide and nitrate anions present. These ions are free to move around in the new solution. Any precipitate must be formed from a combination of these ions. Do you remember the solubility rules for lead ions and iodide ions? Rule number four says, all chlorides, bromides and iodides are soluble, except those of silver, mercury and lead. So lead iodide is therefore insoluble. Can you see that when lead cations are attracted to the iodide anions, they join together to form a new insoluble substance called lead iodide. This is the yellow precipitate. Now what about the potassium ions and the nitrate ions in solution? Well, they will attract each other. But as you know from our solubility rules, all nitrates are soluble and therefore the ions will remain in aqueous solution. This type of reaction is known as an ion exchange reaction. Notice how the cations exchanged their respective anion partners. The reason that lead iodide is insoluble is because of the very strong forces of attraction that exist between the lead and the chloride ions. Let's now write a balanced chemical equation to describe the chemical reaction. Here are the chemical formulas for the equation written underneath the words. Do you notice that the equation is not balanced? Count the number of ions before the reaction and the number of ions after. And you will notice that we need two iodides at the start and we need two nitrates at the end. In order to balance the equation, I will put a two in front of the potassium iodide at the start and two in front of the potassium nitrate at the end. So our equation now reads, two potassium iodides plus lead nitrate gives us two potassium nitrates plus lead iodide. This method can be used to precipitate various insoluble salts. Now let's use the solubility rules to choose an insoluble salt that we want to precipitate. From the solubility rules, I notice that barium sulfate is insoluble. To make barium sulfate, I must have two soluble solutions. I will use barium nitrate and potassium sulfate, as both these solutions are soluble. When we add the two solutions together, ion exchange will take place and I will form barium sulfate precipitate and soluble potassium nitrate. Now why don't you write down the balanced chemical equation for this reaction? Barium nitrate reacts with potassium sulfate to form barium sulfate and potassium nitrate. Now check out your answer. I'm sure you got it correct. Barium nitrate plus potassium sulfate gives you barium sulfate and potassium nitrate. Now to balance this, we need to add a 2 in front of the potassium nitrate. So it now reads... Barium nitrate plus potassium sulfate gives us barium sulfate plus two potassium nitrates. Now we need to check if this really works by doing an experiment. Here we have the solutions of barium nitrate and potassium sulfate. We will now add them together and watch what happens. Do you see the white precipitate of barium sulfate forming? Don't you just love it when our rules help us make the correct predictions? There is still one mystery to solve in this lesson. I will now show you how to change the dull yellow precipitate into the glitter sparkles of golden colored crystals. But firstly, we have to recap an idea from a previous lesson. Do you remember the solubility curve? This curve shows us how temperature affects solubility. The curve for lead iodide shows that if we raise the temperature, the salt will be slightly more soluble. Now that this concept is fresh in your memory, let's continue with our experiment.
we will use the precipitate of lead iodide we prepared earlier and we have been gently heating this for about five minutes. In this time, some of the precipitate has dissolved. Now I'm going to filter the hot solution and remove the precipitate that remains undissolved. The hot solution is a saturated solution at 50 degrees Celsius. Do you remember what the term saturated solution means? A saturated solution is a solution in which no more solute will dissolve. The really great part of this experiment comes next. I'm going to cool the saturated solution by placing it in an ice bath. Look and see what happens. Small crystals of bright yellow potassium iodide form as the temperature decreases. By decreasing the temperature, we lower the solubility of lead iodide and therefore tiny crystals of our precipitate forms. The experiment that you've just seen in the formation of lead iodide crystals is considered to be one of the classic chemical experiments. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and in our next lesson we will look at similar ion exchange reactions to identify ions in solutions. Until then, thank you and goodbye.